Right, so yes. hyper, and I, I gotta ask that. So hyper, you know hyper, right? The like yeah. a fast racer. So hyper in the yeah. chat asks if you think the camera position matters on the drone, not the angle, <laughs> but the position. You like know, the rear. Of the, yeah, there was a frame like, a long time ago that mounted the camera at the rear of the yeah. drone. And you think it matters? Um, so it stands to reason. Like, so clearly the the height of the camera above the ro rotational axis matters. A camera that's mounted right on the roll axis is going to have more circular axial rotations. A camera that's mounted high above the roll axis is going to have, like, swing. Yeah. So that, but that, but that's, that's like if you mount matters. it, like, way high. If you mount it, like, one feet high, well, then you can... The, that, but if it's, no, like... But the same, the same thing happens if it's one inch high. The effect is there. It's just reduced if it's... So, so it's it's minor. Oh, as far as the front I see hyper, uh, goes, hyper. You see, Bartle said it's minor. See, very minor. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hyper strongly. Like, think it's like, about yeah. think about those old quads. Uh, the style of quad, which was like a almost like a toothpick, and you had the camera stack going up, and the camera was mounted on top. Yep, America. those felt very different in the way that the camera swings around. When you would do a roll, the camera would not be axial; it would swing around hard. Yeah, and but that that's changes. Right. How but but that's a that's a toothpick that's a toothpick and on the toothpick no, five inches all right they but, were five but inches. like my my argument is always like imagine there are two cameras on the drone and you think like the, like these two camera mounted in different positions right the only information <laughs> you receive from your drone i, I didn't want to go live stream this way but <laughs> so so the only information you're getting from your drone is the information from your camera you're not getting right. feeling of acceleration or anything like this right and imagine Absolutely. you imagine you're recording two dvrs from two cameras mounted on the drone and yeah, like clearly the I, you're not gonna see the difference the same like you know, the motion gonna... of the drone is the same. Yeah. When it does a rotation, the rotational rate is the same. Um, like you like think I you'll think be able to tell the difference? Different. Like you'll I think feel you'll like be... I can tell the difference. Right. I, I like it to be lower. All right. All right. I don't agree higher. with you, but we gotta well, move on. Look, look. So, like, uh, Lucky in the chat says uh, he is he is Limon. Limon hates being wrong. And Hyper saying face the fact, Limon, it matters. No, so no, much. it doesn't. So here's what, here's, what, here's what I can say. Here's what I can say. Definitively, we can say that a camera mounted on the roll axis and a camera mounted some di distance above or below the roll axis are going to present a different image to the pilot when you roll. That's a fact. So based on that, you could conclude that at least in some cases, it does matter. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's mm. all we got. Oh. <laughs> mm. Sorry. Uh, Asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, our, yeah. I think no. I think I think that the man that knows it all has spoken. Mm. But 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 does it like make you a better pilot or does it really like can you just adjust cuz let's be honest, most of the time we're talking about like a centimeter or 2 centimeters. We're not yeah. talking about a lot. Well, I, I think it, part of so where it came up practically speaking it doesn't matter. Well, did you see the uh, the Chronos frame that Hyper designed working with Minshan, where they they mounted the stack like sort of caddy corner, right? And I believe the reason they yeah. did that, and Hyper, correct me if I'm misspeaking, but I believe they did that because uh, Minshan wanted the camera position in a certain, like a few millimeters, one like further back or something like that. I don't, and I don't so think front to back matters very much. Yeah, because if you think about think about it. If you've got a camera and it's at a certain angle and it's on the roll axis, if you move it forward or back, it's going to have the same sort well, of ro rotation, isn't it? No, but it, it, it's the same effect, but on the pitch axis, though, right? Like if you if you make the argument I, for the roll axis, it's like off center of the the center but the of pitch, pitch. You're you're never on center on the pitch axis, though. True. This is like I, never, I'm always saying that never on center on the pitch. Axis. I also I always like to compare the camera position versus camera angle, and so I did a little bit of math. I don't remember the exact values, oh, uh, yeah, but but uh, if you change your camera angle two degrees, and two degrees is like very small, right? Sometimes we like you buy 3D printed mount for 60 degrees, and then it's actually 63, and you never will be able to tell the difference, and so camera position changes your picture less than two degrees basically if your <laughs> obstacle if your obstacle is like two or three feet away from you already then it's just two degrees is just way more different than the camera position of like i think i kind of counted like 20 millimeters or something which was kind of ridiculously a lot so 
Yeah. So that, that was my I, point. I'm, I'm not convinced that pushing the camera forward or back is going to make a difference for most people because you're already. Um, that's that's it. That's it. We're going to stop here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Up, up and down. Yes. <laughs> All right. All Question right. number five. All right. Let's see. You're gonna let you know. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Back up, back up. This is easy though, because Yvonne, you're the guy who did the blind test where you could tell the difference between 50 and 250 hertz. Yeah. Do a blind test. That'd be so hard because you see you see the props in view in different ways. So we really need simulator for that. You need a dead cat with no props in view. Or simulator, yeah. You need a 3D printed mount that pushes the camera forward and back. Yeah. A few centimeters. Oh yeah. No one will be able to tell. I think nobody will be able to tell this for sure. The same as nobody would be able to tell consistently well, two degrees camera difference. Like, yeah, well, Min Chan just, can tell. I mean, Min Chan can tell. Min Chan isn't human. Min Chan, if Min true. Chan says he can tell, I, I don't disbelieve him. So, yeah, Hyper <laughs> said in the human. comments that Min Chan had him redesign the camera position four times for the Kronos before it felt right. Yeah, because, yeah, I think, well, Hyper is also crazy. Like, Hyper, that's your, your <laughs> Min -chan, crazy. Min Chan's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and they're both crazy. Like, you know, there's two guys designing a frame. That's kind of crazy. So, <laughs> I, I agree 1000% with Brian Lewis. We need way more double blind tests in FPV. Here, yeah. I have a I have a rant. Hold on, before we go to the next question, yeah. I have a rant that that sort of vaguely relates to your question, which is, what do people believe that is bullshit, right? Yeah. Um, I and it pertains to motor testing. I think that most people can't really tell the difference between, let's say, you've got similarly sized motors, yeah. roughly, and roughly the same KV. You know, within a hundred or maybe yeah. two hundred KV. I think that most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference in a blind test. And I, I say agree. that maybe a racer who is putting in laps on, on a track, maybe, but I yeah. think that would pertain more to KV. Um, I think the differences are so subtle. You see things like differences in responsiveness uh, on a bench test. You'll see yeah. differences in, in efficiency and thrust. And, and uh, me and Aaron Ciotti did a test with three motors um, two of them were FPV cycle prototypes that Bob Ruge sent me. And one of them was a Zing 2207. I had three identical quads and I put the motors on each of them. And I said to Ciotti, how are we going to test this and like be fair? And I real I had just read that what they'll do in like real science is they'll do a split test and they'll try and decide if you can even tell the difference. Like if they've got a new formula of Coke and an old formula of Coke. They'll give it to people and they'll, there's a way they structure the test to see if they can tell the difference. And if you can't tell the difference between two motors at all, then any opinion you have about the motor, like, oh, it's smooth, it's juicy, yeah. it's responsive, any opinion you have, you shut the, shut the heck up. So we did a test <laughs> where, where he flew the quad blind. He didn't know which one it was. And I took it and he was, he was under the goggles. I unplugged it. And then either I would switch to a different quad or I would plug the same quad in again. I like and that. I would ask him, d d is it the same quad as you just flew or is it a different one? And we did the tests. And when we were done, both of us were no better than like 50%. We couldn't tell. I like that. Well, so yeah. Then, I'm supposed to be a bad I'm, cop, but I agree with you here. Like 100% agree here. <laughs> and, with you. And yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You haven't seen me. I mean, there are a lot of reasons why I don't go out of my way to review motors. But one of the reasons is, I was like, well, f I can't freaking tell the difference between three motors. What business do I have reviewing them? Yeah, and I think everybody, pretty... everybody, sorry, everybody else out there who reviews motors needs to post that a double blind test yeah, or a single blind test where they demonstrate that they can tell the dang difference before anybody should listen to anything they have to say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. I think ranting. like with motors, you can kind of review, although it will be hard like to review like durability of the motor. At least that's what matters for me. We fly it like at night spot with concrete. Yep. If motor yep. is not durable, you're just going to waste more money. And then you can do this blind test, but it can cost a lot of money. So, but yeah. I yeah, agree. It, like, it, it, and it is, it's pretty hard to like actually test motor durability though, scientifically. Right. Yeah. Because you're like, right. well, I flew at the night spot for one night and i killed one motor or i flew for three nights and i didn't kill a motor so this yeah. one's better but you could have killed three and three batteries just yeah you gotta be very careful with and, that too 
and there's differences in motors like the the construction and so forth the price right all those things are things you can look at and and make opinions about but as far as how they fly I think that very, very few people, if any, can actually tell the difference between similarly spec'd motors, yeah. except on the bench. Um, I Atreides agree. in the chat says, I can tell a major difference between Emacs Eco 2 2306 1900 KV and ZT Innovate 2306 1960 KV V2. Prove it. Everybody yeah. says that. I don't, <laughs> I, I'm not saying I don't believe you, but prove right. it. Build yeah. two identical quads, exactly the same build, exactly the same weight. Put one set of motors on one, one set of motors on the other, and yeah. blind yourself. Now we also, we also uh, played music into his ears so he couldn't hear the motors because because we thought maybe being able to oh. hear the KV difference would throw you off. Yeah, yeah that's that smart. makes totally it harder. Smart. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's interesting because you're like, oh yeah, well the, this one just set was higher pitch, so it's definitely got more power. Or yeah, I, I also say so. Uh, whoever was said that in the chat that he can feel the difference, like. If you know if you know what you're flying right now, it can be so misleading. Your brain can trick you so hard. I remember I was yep. I was testing Betaflight D Shot 600 versus Betaflight D Shot 1200, uh, and when I was switching by myself, I could swear I feel the difference. And then when I did a blind test in Betaflight, it exactly. was just I couldn't exactly. tell the difference. But I swear we, I could tell the difference. Like that's like we were we were like we were like <laughs> I have the, I have all the footage. I didn't release the video. I didn't release the video. You should. Because if you I should. released the video, the, everyone would watch the video and go, well, Bardwell and Ciotti are clearly stupid. The message of the video is placebo effect is real, and it yep. is very hard to tell the yep. difference between similarly spec motors simply by flying them. But no one would get that message, and they would just say we were stupid and I didn't release it. But we were sitting there, we were like, oh, I don't know. Once you start, you, it's it's very hard. It's very hard. Yeah. Well, and yeah. Yeah, I, I know maybe two years if, ago. If, if... Go ahead, John. Oh, yeah. I was saying maybe two years ago, I stopped selecting a motor based on necessarily how it felt or how powerful or fast it was. And I started picking a motor based on how available it was, how durable mm -hmm. over like yep. long periods of time it was, and whether I could get spare bells yep. or not. Because a spare bell for 10 bucks. Yep. Even on a premium motor, like the one I mostly fly is the 533 heads up motor. And then that's also plentiful. So if I'm at a race and I run out, there's most likely 15 other guys that have the same one that I can bump same. one off of in a, an emergency. So, yep. Neil, did you want to say something? Yeah, well, I was just just going back to the testing to say that, like, it's really hard to tell something apart when you're flying. Uh, but you know, like, uh, Mason mentioned and you know, I, I think in, in JB, you mentioned before too, there could be some that you could tell if you're on a track and you're turning the same laps and you're at the top end of the motor and somebody that really has the ability to get all of the motor maybe could feel that. But, uh, I think it's really hard to feel that. And especially if you're just say doing punch outs or, or, or not some particular structured flying, that it'd be very hard to for sure tell the difference. I, in the I agree. Day. Hyper in the chat says he's sure he could, could tell the difference between a 60 KV difference between two motors. I 100% believe that a top racer, I've seen Alex Vanover put in times on a track and it's like, you know, 12.12 seconds, 12.15 seconds, 12.13 seconds. And I'm yeah. like, this guy's so, and, and that's not just Vanover. All the top right. racers have that level At that of tier, yeah. Once you can reach that level of consistency around a track, I would believe you that you could tell a 60 KV difference in motors. But lots of people review motors and they'll just go out, they'll put it on a quad, they'll whip it around a little bit and they'll go, ah, I really like this motor, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know why we should believe anything you say. All right. Well, I, li I like this. Uh, I like your answer for the question. So this, this yeah. is the... Part of his opinion that is different from popular opinion. So th this is I would is it. love people to do this. Yeah, I would love for people to say, "Hey, I'm here to review this motor. Before I give you my opinions on the motor, I want to show you the results of my blind test. I flew these motors around the track, and I I could identify the motor in a blind test. You know, eight times out of out of ten, or yeah. twenty seven times out of thirty. And then I'm like, okay, I will now listen to what you have to say because, yeah.